Exams are not everybody's cup of tea, right? I know this more than most. I have struggled with exams all of my life. They are not my favorite thing. But a few years ago, I managed to find the right formula to study for and pass those all important Microsoft certifications. Stick with me, I'm gonna share with you what I've learned about these exams. Welcome back to the channel, everybody. It's good to see you again. Please don't forget to hit that like button, give me a thumbs up and give me a subscribe. It's massively appreciated and it helps me so much. Today, we're gonna to be talking all about Microsoft certifications. There are loads and loads of Microsoft exams that you can take. Why are these important? Well, it's a great way to validate your skills, to show your employers and their customers that you are serious about what you do, that you can back up what you do on a day-to-day -day basis by taking these exams. These are recognized in the industry and they are going to help you to get the job you want, the promotion you want. In short, these are things that are really, really worth your time and effort. And there's a lot of ways that you can prepare for them. If, like me, you're not a natural at studying and taking exams at uh, academia, for lack of a better word, let me share with you some things that I've learned along the way, because I've been there. I didn't think I could pass Microsoft exams, and a few years ago, I just found the right formula. I studied a certain way, and I found, yeah, this, this is gonna work for me, and I managed to start passing Microsoft certifications, and it's such a great feeling when you do. So, how do we do it? Where do you start? Let's dive in. Number one, start with the Microsoft Learning Paths. Microsoft have a lot of great material that is right on their website at learn.microsoft.com. I need to take the SC200 exam very soon. It's the last in the SC series that I haven't completed. And if you go to the page for that exam, you can scroll down and you can get a lot of great guidance on what you need to study for. Take a look first at the study guide. You can click on that and you're gonna get a full list of what you need to study for. It's gonna show you the skills that are measured, updates to the exam and all the sections that are gonna help you prepare for your test. Absolutely fantastic stuff. And in preparation for that, before you go ahead and actually schedule that exam, you can take free practice assessments and you can prepare right from here by selecting either self-paced or instructor-led preparation and learning paths right from within Microsoft. These are really cool. You can go through at your own pace and see where you're at on your learning journey. Really cool stuff. Number two, use more than one method to study. While the Microsoft official study guides are absolutely brilliant, there is absolutely no harm at all in seeking other means of legal, and I emphasize that word, legal study guides. You can find aids to your studies on places like Pluralsight, CBT Nuggets, and you can find lots of guides from Microsoft MVPs on their YouTube channels and their blogs on how to study for these exams. You can also look at books from publishers like Pact. There's lots of ways to supplement your learning from the Microsoft Learn website by adding these techniques. And it's gonna stand you in good stead to get some additional learning methods into your studies. Just be careful that what you're doing is up to date and it is legal because things like exam dumps are absolutely not the way to go and are very, very, and rightly so frowned upon by Microsoft. Number three, practice, practice, and then practice some more. There is no such thing as being overprepared for a Microsoft exam. They are constantly updating them and adding new things to the study guides. So make sure that you're absolutely up to date with the study guides that you know what's in there, you know what is expected of you. And once you know that, get yourself a Microsoft 365 tenant, get yourself a trial of E5. There are lots of ways that you can get practice tenants. Uh, if you work for a Microsoft partner or if you're an MVP, then you should be able to get access to one of the um, demo tenants at demos.microsoft.com and get a 30-day tenant. 
and you can practice till your heart's content. You've effectively got a disposable tenant. Get in there, get familiar with the technology. There is no substitute whatsoever for using this technology and testing it to its absolute limits. You're gonna learn by doing. This is a great way to prepare for your test. Number four, don't be afraid to fail. Hopefully most times when you take an exam, you're gonna get a nice pass mark at the end. It's a great feeling when you pass, but your heart can sink when occasionally you don't pass. And it's happened to us all. It's happened to me recently. It took me three attempts to pass the SC100 Cybersecurity Architect exam. That was a real tough one for me, but I was determined to refocus, study some more, work hard and get through it. And I was able to do so. What's really great is that when you get to the end of an exam and you see that dreaded fail, which you can't ignore, it's really brutal. I hate that word actually, because I don't think there's any such thing as failing. You've put your best effort into it. But one of the great ways of moving forward is look at the score report that you get at the end of the exam. And you are able to see on that report some graphical indicators of where your weakest areas were. So you are going to know where to focus your studies to revise before your next attempt at taking the exam. Get back on that horse really, really quickly. Don't wait too long, especially if your initial score was very, very close to the pass mark. If you're not that far away, if you're say 50 or so marks off that 700 that you need to get a pass mark, study some more and get that test booked in again at least no longer than say two weeks after that first attempt. You will do it. Keep focused, keep going. Don't wait too long. And finally, number five, keep an eye on your renewal assessments. In your learn.microsoft.com learning profile, you'll be able to see all of your certifications and you are going to need to renew those on a yearly basis. You'll get a lot of notifications from Microsoft in your emails. Keep an eye on your junk emails because sometimes they will go in there but these are going to give you a lot of notice for when you are able to take that yearly renewal assessment. The really great thing about the renewal process for Microsoft certifications is that you don't have to sit it under exam conditions and it's absolutely free to do so. This is really, really great from Microsoft. I applaud them for doing this because what they're doing is they're encouraging you to learn, to study some more, to learn new things that have changed in the exam study guide since you first took that exam. So you have the chance to take a renewal assessment of 25 questions, not under exam conditions. You can reset it as many times as you want. If you don't get through it that first time, you can see uh, where you were weak and go back and take it again. And you are gonna learn new stuff to update your knowledge on those subjects that you need to know to get your certification renewed and be absolutely awesome at your job. And that's it for another video, folks. Thank you so much for your company as ever. Please don't forget to give me a subscribe, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video and leave me some comments. I'd love to know how you get on with your own studying journey, how you study, how you've got on with your exams, if you've passed first time, if you've needed to go back and take another look at it and how you did it, what your strategy was and what worked for you and what didn't. You're gonna find that different things work for different people because everyone learns in a different way and that's fine. Okay, until next time, I will see you real soon. Bye-bye.